Good day, everybody. This is Nathan Manning with GoAppDeveloper.com. I've been in the mobile industry for over a decade, and I'm here to help app developers to sell more apps. Today's topic is how to write a fantastic mobile app description. Sounds simple, right? But it's something that people get wrong every day, and I'm here to help you do it right. The first topic I want to talk about here is social proof. So what exactly is social proof? It's a complicated sounding concept, which is actually very simple. It basically means that we look to other people to determine how safe we feel using a product or service. We've all seen this in everyday situations. You're walking down the street and you see people looking at something. It's almost impossible not to stop and check out what those people are looking at. Social proof is something that you can also use in your app descriptions to get people to believe that other people think your app is important. One other thing to remember is that consumers are very risk averse. No one likes to look like an idiot. And that's one reason why social proof is so important. So when you're writing your app description, it's important to demonstrate how your application has already been pre-approved by other consumers. Some examples are positive app store reviews, comments from people who have tried the app and think it's good. It can even be some data for how your app has been performing in the download ranks. So for example, if your app has been the number one application in a certain number of countries, feel free to put that in your app description. The second thing I want to talk about today is storytelling. I think a lot of people, especially developers who have an application that's not a game, tend to be very focused on features when describing their app. It's important to remember that emotions sell better than facts. People are natural storytellers. From the beginning of time, we sat around the campfire listening to stories that help us improve our lives. When you write an app description, it's important to write something that's not dry, boring, and filled with statistics. Tell people why your game or application will make their life better. In terms of a game, you really want to create an emotional connection between the player and the main character. That's why you find games like Angry Birds almost creating their own language around the game characters. They create a personality that tells a story. When it comes to applications, you need to tell a story through vivid words that highlight the problem that you're trying to solve with your application. Again, it's important not to focus on features, statistics, etc., but also focus on how your game or application will really make someone's life better. Another thing that's really important when building a great app description is authority. So we've already talked a bit about social proof, and that has a lot to do with how other users view your game and how they convince your potential customers that your app is worth downloading. Authority is the flip side of that. So social proof is about consumers, authority is about thought leaders. An example of authority would be media reviews, awards, or industry quotes. This is why it's so important to reach out to reviewers early in the process of building your application. Typically, when I'm releasing an application or working with a company that's developing a game, I encourage that company to reach out to reviewers three or even four months before the game is ready for release. I do this so that on day one, they have quotes and support from reviewers lined up to help them make their game successful. Another small trick that you can use is to keep your eye open for celebrity mentions. It's not uncommon that celebrities try your game, so make sure that you follow people on Twitter and keep your eye open for those who play your game or use your application, and feel free, if it's a public comment, to include it in the description of your application. Again, what you're trying to do here is to create the perception that your app or game is popular, not just with consumers, but also with the people that count, app reviewers, celebrities, and industry influentials. The next topic that I want to talk about is borrowing ideas. This is something that a lot of people feel pretty uncomfortable with. You want to feel like you're doing it all yourself. The reality is that there are lots of companies out there, whether it's Rovio with Angry Birds or a publisher like Chilingo, who have done a lot of this research for you. There's a story about how Burger King used to do their market research regarding where to put stores. Basically, what they would do is skip the millions of dollars of research and just build their stores right across the street from McDonald's. Why would they do that? Because they know that McDonald's already found all the right places to build their stores. The same is true with app descriptions. Don't be afraid to go through the applications in the app stores and look for best practices. Look at those successful apps and get inspiration. It's important to note here that you shouldn't just blindly copy someone else's description. You certainly need to be original, but you should always be analytical about what it is that makes the other apps most successful. Next, I want to talk about why it's important to cut your app description into sections, into manageable chunks that people can consume. You know, we live in an age when almost everybody has a very short attention span, and this is especially true when people are looking at content on a small mobile screen, scrolling through information. 
So it's extremely important when you're writing your mobile app description that you put everything into a format where people can consume one piece of information at a time. I recommend not using more than 50 words per section with very clear headings for every section. A good example of a mobile app description is Plants vs Zombies. Not only are these guys super creative, but they've also done a great job of breaking their description into sections that are easy to consume. So again, be careful not just to get the content right, but make sure that you put that content into manageable sections so it's easy for your readers to consume. Next, I want to talk a bit about social networks. Most people think that the only place where consumers will see their application is inside one of the app stores. The truth is that your description is going to be posted in many more places than you can even imagine. The reason for this is that a lot of websites are quite lazy when it comes to getting content for their sites. Typically, your descriptions are reposted, automatically copied to review sites, and added to app databases and blogs, even to consumer pages. So it's important that your description has links to all of your social media communities, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, so that you can gain valuable backlinks. So have a social media presence and make sure that these sites are promoted for free as other people use your app description. Let's talk about creating emotions. You know, most app developers feel a bit awkward when it comes to marketing in general. And I think that's one of the reasons they tend to focus on quite dry descriptions of their applications. It's important to make sure that when you're writing an app description, you focus on vivid, descriptive, and colorful words. If this is not something that you're personally comfortable with, then I encourage you to find someone who likes writing. It could be a friend, colleague, basically someone who's willing to take your application and punch it up a bit. If all else fails, you can always hire someone on elance.com. Just make sure that you're not writing cliches. No one's app should be fun, in quotes, because everybody's app is fun. Tell a story about the experience you're trying to create. Who are the main characters? Talk about the journey that you're trying to take your customer on. Don't talk about generalities like it's fun, smooth, or has amazing graphics. None of those things will convince anyone that your application is different. Really try to tell a story and use descriptive, colorful words. Finally, I touched a bit on this on the last slide, but again, mobile application marketing in general is a difficult concept for many developers, and it can be quite overwhelming, especially when what you really want to do is just focus on getting a great application launched. The truth is that there are a lot of resources out there that can help you with the marketing side of things. I've certainly been on the publisher side, and I know firsthand what it means to work with developers to make their applications popular in the market. If you don't want to go that route, you always have the option to use services like elance.com to find writers, PR people, community managers, and other freelance marketers that can help you to promote your app. I strongly encourage developers that don't feel like they have the time to do the marketing themselves to find help. There's plenty of it out there, and it doesn't have to cost you as much as a lot of developers think it will. That's it for our short presentation today. I really appreciate the time that you're taking to be with me. I hope this has been helpful to you in writing an effective app description. If you have any questions, you can always contact me on Twitter. That's at Nathan Manning or on LinkedIn or simply drop me an email at Nathan at goappdeveloper.com.